Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. There are absolutely no words that can describe the tragedy that happened in Newtown, Connecticut last Friday morning. It is beyond understanding as to why that had to happen to those 27 individuals. When you turn on the news right now, mental illness are two words that keep being brought to everyone's attention. Well, this morning I'm actually joined by clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia. He's one of the most experienced and professionally recognized psychologists here in the Keys with over 35 years of experience. We're going to talk this morning about mental illness, specifically the mentally ill in prisons. Dr. Ragusia, it's always great having you back on the show. Always glad to be here. All right, before we get into the mentally ill in prison, Dr. Mm -hmm. Ragusia, let's focus on the Newtown, Connecticut shooting for just a minute. How would you say parents and children can move forward from here? Well, in general, one of the things that people should do is stop watching it on TV. Um, what we know from past tragedies like this is that the constant repetitive news that is part of our 24-hour news cycle, winds up causing enormous psychological distress to people. You know, watch the news once, find out what's new, move on. But don't watch it on CNN over and over and over and over again. It's just horribly depressing. It is. Okay? So that's for adults, pretty much. Mm -hmm. now, now, for kids, there are some things that people can do with their children, I think, that are very important. And I'll just go th through them very quickly, if that's okay mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, what you want to do with your kids is, is keep them away from the TV as much as you can in terms of seeing things like that, particularly little bitty kids. They don't need to see this stuff. Now, they're going to see some of it. They're going to hear some of it. There's no way to keep it away from them totally. So what you do is, is number one, you provide them with a developmentally appropriate, clear, and straightforward explanation of the event. Now, what, that, what I mean by that is, is you're going to explain it to a six-year-old very differently from, your, from the way you're going to explain it to a 16-year-old, mm -hmm. okay? You know, one of the points I make with parents is you don't give kids more information than they're ready for, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if your kid comes up, well, the, the story I use is kid comes up to his parents and he says, Mommy, where do I come from? And the mother and father look at each other and they go, Oh, my God, it's finally time. We've got to go <laughs> through this. And they go to the books and they take out the books about the birds and the bees and then they work their way up to puppies having babies, little baby puppies, and, and then they show the mother and the father making love, and it's a very special moment in bed, and then it, the baby grows in the uterus, and then eventually comes out, and it's born, <laughs> <coughs> and they show films and slides and videos and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and, and the mother and father look at the kid and say, does that answer your question? <laughs> and the kid says, Jerry comes from Philadelphia, where do I come from? <laughs> Okay? Right. So, Great so, example. So you don't give kids more than they're ready for. Mm -hmm. Okay? Second of all, as soon as you can, have a return to normalcy in every way that you interact in the house. Okay? So um, if you've got a normal routine of turning the TV on when the news is on, turn it on for a little bit and then turn it off. Okay? Whenever they get to the story of the shooting and the kids and all that kind of stuff. And then once this news works its way through the cycle, then you can go back to watching TV in your normal way over dinner, if that's what you do. Um, uh, be flexible about it, so that if something appears on TV that you don't want your kid to see, don't go running screaming to the TV and say, oh my God, don't watch that. Mm -hmm. okay? it, don't make a bigger project out of it than it needs to be. Be flexible with what you're trying to do. Let your children know it's okay to feel upset, sad, or angry, okay? Some children don't know that it's okay to express emotion. Next of all, be a good listener and an observer. Pay attention to what your kids are saying and the way they're acting. Next, provide a variety of different ways for kids to express their emotions. They can talk about it, they can draw pictures about it, they can act it out with puppets but give them ways to express what it is they're feeling about all this. Mm -hmm. Most kids aren't verbal enough to cogently express these thoughts in the English language. Mm -hmm. So they usually express it through their play. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, focus on resiliency and human compassion, meaning that what you tell your kids is, watch how all these people rebuild their lives, how the town sticks together and they help one another, 
and we're all going to help them. Did you notice how President Obama said, you're not alone in Newtown, right. we're all with you, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what we're going to do, is we're going to bounce back together, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And people are going to help them, you'll mm -hmm. see. Oh, absolutely. And it's already happening. People everywhere across the nation are, are helping them in their prayers, of course. And I even saw that Christmas decorations, they're taking Christmas decoration down and honoring the victims mm -hmm. now, so that's Good. neat. We're going to take a quick break right now, but we'll resume this discussion when we get back from these messages. Stay with us.